everyone. Welcome to Alumni Talk. In today's webinar, you will learn more about the residential MBA programs at the Samuel Curtis Johnson Graduate School of Management at Cornell University. My name is Zornita, and I'm the moderator of this online session on behalf of UNIMAI. I would like to thank you all for joining us and to welcome our panelists, Eddie Asby, Interim Executive Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at Johnson, Chris Anderson, MBA alumna class 2015, and Jorge Garcia, MBA alum, alumna class 2016. We will start with a presentation of the programs and their advantages. Then we will continue with a panel discussion in which Chris and Jorge will share with us more about their academic experience and how it contributed to their professional development. Your questions are more than welcome. So if you have any, please write them down in the chat box anytime during the webinar, and we will take the time to address them in the Q&A session at the end of the session. Uh, before we start, let us double check whether everyone can hear us. Uh, if you can hear me, would you please write a yes in the chat? Yes, thank you very much. It seems that we are all set. So I'll now give the word to Eddie. Great, great. and thank you so much um, for, for having us. And of course, everyone, um, whether it's good morning, Good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Eddie Asby. I am the Interim Executive Director of Admissions uh, here at Johnson. And um, it is a true pleasure to have you on to learn more about Johnson and ultimately how you see an MBA being a good fit um, throughout your, your journey. Um, I'm gonna spend about the next uh, 10 minutes or so um, doing a brief just overview of Johnson, what I feel makes us unique um, and then followed by our, our session, we will have two of our alums um, who are currently on the call, um, Chris Anderson and Jorge Garcia, who are here to share their experiences as well. And of course, uh, shed some light on culture uh, in Ithaca, the curriculum, et cetera. So, um, so once again, thank you all for being here and we're gonna jump right into the presentation. All right, so, um, so with Johnson, uh, there are a variety of MBA programs that we offer um, within, within our community. As you can see, there are um, a, a list of, of programs that we have, but there are three residential MBA programs um, that are, are pretty key to the work that I do, um, my admissions team, um, and then of course, some of the other um, MBA programs out there are conducted um, through um, other admissions teams here at, at Cornell. So um, my team in particular oversees the one-year and the two-year Ithaca-based programs. Um, and then there's the Cornell Tech program located in New York City, which we'll talk about uh, in a few. So, one of the so when talking to candidates, one of the things that we talk about is really finding the program that's the best fit for you. Uh, so you know, looking at our two-year program, which is our traditional MBA program, uh, typically, we have uh, approximately about 280 students uh, in the class for the one-year program. There are approximately 60 students in the class. And then, of course, with Cornell Tech, uh, that program is approximately 80 students, um, really bridging that gap between business and the digital economy. As you go ahead and do your research on which program is the best fit for you, uh, it is important that you have a good sense on type of student that we um, enroll in both programs. Uh, our traditional two-year program, um, we typically will see someone with a, about an average of five years of work experience. Uh, they may be early on in their career, uh, someone who's looking to maybe make a career switch, um, someone who's looking for two years of networking, the internship opportunities, um, et cetera. Where the one-year program, to even qualify for the one-year program, you must have an advanced degree um, or there's certain certifications like a CFA or a CPA that will qualify you for the program. But in the one-year program, we will typically see someone who's either advanced in their career, uh, they have strong networks, and they know that they don't need that internship um, opportunity, uh, but, what, but are looking for an accelerated MBA uh, to complete in that one-year um, timeframe. When I think about some of the things that makes Johnson unique, um, I, one of the first things that comes to mind is our emerging learning uh, experience. 
So the immersion happens in the spring semester of your second year if you're completing the two-year program. If you are completing the one-year program, of course, it happens the spring semester um, right before you graduate. Um, but this immersion gives you the opportunity of really, um, you know, digging deeper um, into your specific career path. So by taking advanced level courses um, in a particular area, it gives you the opportunity of really having that hands-on experience, which is one of the things that we uh, mention in, in, you know, within our curriculum is that performance learning approach. Um, but also one of the best things that I believe a, a lot of our students will talk about is really having the feedback and um, the coaching opportunity from business practitioners. Um, what this is really designed to do, um, of course, if you're moving on to that summer internship in the spring semester, is, design, is designed to really prepare you for that summer internship uh, so that you can really hit the ground running. When looking at the variety of different emergence that we offer, um, here, of course, you can see uh, a selection of emergence that we offer. So uh, just to kind of uh, elaborate a little bit further, um, if you're looking to go, let's say, digital technology. That spring semester, you are taking advanced level courses focusing on digital technology. You're working on various projects um, from companies, whether there are large, you know, Fortune 500 companies, whether they're smaller companies within, you know, um, the uh, let's say the, the Ithaca um, community, whether they're um, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial ventures. Once again, it gets you to really be able to dig uh, deeper into these specific areas, but also to truly prepare you for that career path. As you can see, there are immersions focusing on, you know, investment banking and um, product and, um, you know, strategic project, strategic product and marketing, corporate finance operations. Um, there's also a customized option for you as well, especially if you're looking to go into a very specific area itself. So, you know, once again, these, this is one of the areas that I've truly feel that, you know, separates Johnson, you know, from other um, programs out there. And of course, being that we have two of our alums on the call, I'm, I'm sure they'll elaborate further about their uh, immersion experience. But also what makes us unique is that we have the Cornell Tech MBA campus. So we get asked the question all the time, I want to, you know, uh, apply to our one year, two year residential programs in Ithaca, but am I able to take advantage of the Cornell Tech program um, on Roosevelt Island in New York City? And, that, and the answer is yes, absolutely. So what we offer our students um, from the one year and the two year MBA program are two opportunities. Uh, so the first one is um, um, weekend courses that happen in the fall semester where you have the op opportunity of really taking advantage of courses such as cryptocurrency courses or uh, digital marketing courses, you know, courses focusing on entrepreneurship um, in the tech space. Um, but then also we allow our students to take advantage of two, uh, one of two spring intensives. There is a FinTech intensive, and then there's also a digital marketing in intensive. Uh, the intensives of course will require you. Um, and of course this past year, being different with, with COVID-19, but um, this will require you to actually spend a full semester um, or, or seven, seven weeks um, um, in these intensives, but then also allowing you to have the opportunity to, um, to remain in New York City, taking elective courses, completing a full semester um, through one of these intensives. Once again, this gives you the opportunity of networking um, you know, with uh, Cornell Tech students. It gives you the opportunity of really being able to immerse yourself in the fintech space as well as the digital marketing space, um, and to really be able to help you expand within your career path as you as you move forward. For those of you that are trying to get a sense of what Cornell Tech uh, is about, um, and and the type of student that are housed at Cornell Tech, it really are for it's really for students who are looking to bridge that gap between the business side of things, but then also the digital economy. So when you really think about it, not everyone can speak the business language, not everyone can speak the tech, uh, the tech language. So this gives you that opportunity to bridge that gap and to really be able to you know, um, you know, come together with a, a new mindset to be able to come up with the best solution um, you know, um, 
during various um, business um, problems. But also one of the things that you're gonna see from our, um, our program and from our website, you're gonna see a lot about leadership. So we know that you wanna get a great job. You know, we know that you wanna make some great money out there, but leadership um, is also something that's very key to our, our community. Uh, so here are some, um, you know, some leadership programs and opportunities that our students will participate in as they go through their um, MBA uh, experience. And of course, I know that uh, Chris and Jorge will elaborate a little bit further on this, but um, one of the first things that we do is we try to make sure that as you go through the, your orientation experience, that you really get a sense of, um, you know, your, your classmates and really getting to know each other a, a little bit better. Uh, so we put together a, a Johnson Outdoor Experience for our students. We put our students into core teams, which your core team will be your, your team of four or five that you will work with uh, that first semester uh, to, to solve business problems together, to work on projects, and of course, go through that educational experience. There's leadership expeditions. Um, there's our Johnson Board Fellows where our students can sit on the board of a local nonprofit in the Ithaca area. Um, there's our leadership fellowship programs where our trained second year students are mentors to our uh, incoming MBAs. And then of course, there's the Park Fellowship. Um, this is the Park Fellowship is a two year full tuition fellowship um, for candidates who are applying to the two year MBA program, uh, also who are US citizens, um, but it, it does have a, a strong leadership component to it. Um, and of course, we identify approximately 24 Park Fellows throughout the program. Just briefly about Ithaca. If you're not familiar with Ithaca, Ithaca is located in central New York. We are about four hours north of New York City. Um, we are an amazing, amazing uh, college town. Um, we are the largest of the Ivy Leagues out there. Uh, so you have students, of course, representing um, so many different areas um, and so many regions of, of the world. But if you are someone who enjoys the wine country, uh, if you enjoy, you know, the local state parks, um, being on the lake, hiking and trails, that's something that you're going to get within the Ithaca community. But also for those of you who may be thinking about bringing your family uh, to camp, uh, you know, to Ithaca, this is also a great, um, place to bring uh, your, your family. So, um, you know, get to know us. Um, we always, we love, we will always make ourselves available. We love to have the conversations uh, about our experience. So definitely reach out um, if you have any questions about living in Ithaca and the overall uh, experience. Just briefly, um, if you are looking at applying um, um, to Johnson for this year, um, this is just our application checklist. Um, I'm not going to go through it all at this time. I'll open it up, of course, to Q&A uh, later, later on, but it's pretty standard um, where, you know, your, your resume is important. There are required essays that we have. Um, the, of course, your letters of recommendations are very important. Um, if you have taken the, the GMAT or the GRE, um, you know, of course, submitting a strong score is important uh, to us. Um, and of course, you can see all, all the other requirements as well. But the interview, I would say, is one, it is invite only, but that's also, too, a great opportunity to really showcase who you are and what makes you a strong candidate for Johnson. So whether you're looking at applying at our later round for the two-year program, which is April 8th, um, Ultimately, I would say put your best foot forward and submit the best application possible. And of course, as you go through this journey itself, um, I'm always available. My team is always available to really be able to help you through this process and to um, you know, help you put your best foot forward. Um, for the, as far as our application deadlines, as you can see, um, we have gone through the majority of our deadlines uh, at this, at this point for anyone who's applied for our one-year program. Um, we did have our last application deadline um, on, on March 8th, uh, the same deadline for the Cornell Tech program. If you are looking at an April round for the two-year MBA program, once again, that is going to be April 8th. Once again, I can't stress it enough to you as you think about the application process. Uh, take your time, 
uh, submitting the best application possible. So I know that was a, a, a very quick overview on Johnson, um, but I always welcome um, the opportunity for you to reach out to me directly, whether it's um, scheduling a Zoom call, whether it is um, just you know myself or my team answering your emails. But once again, uh, here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out. Um, but at this time, I'm also very excited to introduce um, two of our alumni uh, who are also here on the call, um, which is uh, Chris Anderson, as well as once again, Jorge Garcia. Um, so Chris, Jorge, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to stop sharing my, my screen right now so that everyone can see um, the lovely faces and um, we will um, go ahead and get started with our panel today. So, um, well, first of all, um, Chris, Jorge, thank you for joining us today. Um, just to get started, we'll start with you, Chris. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, uh, giving our audience a brief overview of um, who you are, what you were doing before an MBA and what you're currently doing as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thanks for inviting me. Excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Chris Anderson, class of 2015 from Johnson School of Management. Um, it, I feel like time flies by so quickly. I can't believe it's already been almost six years. So it's a little scary. Um, but just a little background about me. I had a, I actually went to Cornell as an undergrad. So it's class of 2008. Um, I was a, an applied economics and management major. It was kind of business focused from then. Um, went on to work in advertising at a small media agency in New York City and um, did that for four years. Uh, when I was there, um, I was basically managing um, different advertising campaigns for food and beverage companies and CPG companies on commodity goods. So you go to the store, you buy milk, you see a sticker, an ad, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. There might be a coupon on there, something you can use. So like um, really fun, engaging. And for me, I, um, I really enjoyed it, learned a lot. And uh, I think probably the best part of that experience is I had the chance to work with a lot of different food and beverage and CPG companies. And so I had the chance to work with different brand managers. We've run ads for Kellogg's or General Mills uh, or other, other big name brands that you know. And I was always curious to know what was really going on from the brand side. Why are they choosing these colors? Why are they choosing this messaging? What is the bigger picture? What is it that they are um, you know, actually trying to accomplish here other than getting more impressions and getting, you know, boosting sales. Like what is really behind all of this and the decisions that they're making? Um, and so for me, that kind of led me to an MBA. Uh, I knew that to get over to the client side you, in, in brand management, you have to have an MBA. And so that's where I started, you know, kind of exploring Cornell was top of mind because it is the best school in the world, obviously, but, you know, my alma mater loved it. And so looked into Cornell and, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't any surprise to me that it has a really solid program as well. Um, so it was just, you know, seemed like it's sort of the ideal choice. I don't want to keep talking yet. You just, you know, in case you have follow-up questions here, I don't want to get ahead of you, but um, it chose Cornell for a number of reasons, just really solid program, great network, very good memories, of course, as it is gorgeous, as they say, the pun, um, but it's true, it really is, and uh, just kind of went from there. So <laughs> not, I feel like that was a lot to cram into the first part, but I'll pause there for a moment. No, that, that was great, Chris. Thank you so much. And um, of course, we have a, a, a list of questions uh, for you, but thanks uh, once again for joining. And uh, Jorge, same thing with you. Um, just can you, um, of course, introduce yourself and just give our audience a little bit about your background um, and also, you know, why why you chose uh, Johnson. Sure. Um, thanks again for having us over here. I'm really excited to be part of this webinar. Um, yeah. So, um, George, I um, prior to going to business school, I was working at Deutsche Bank for about eight and a half years. Um, worked a lot within the U.S. for about four and a half years, then spent a lot of time in, in Germany as well as India, primarily within the bank's uh, global, global transaction banking division. And what they do there is really kind of behind the scenes plumbing, the plumbing system of the overall banking infrastructure. So when you think about, um, you know, making a payment, you know, from one person to the other, well, what we do, uh, what we did then at Deutsche Bank is really make payments on behalf of financial institutions or corporations all over the world that have, you know, 
hundreds or, or even thousands of accounts um, spread across the world in which they and and they they were really forced to sort of manage their liquidity and my my role there was to really help develop different products as well as manage different projects to sort of implement a lot of those products across the client regions and um, it was really an exciting time. I got to travel lots, you know, throughout Europe and throughout Asia and work across different cultures. Um, and it was just a phenomenal experience. But I think for me, you know, what I, what I, what I felt was really lacking in my overall um, experience was a really deep understanding of the, of the products and services that we were providing to our clients. You know, having worked there for eight and a half years, I realized, okay, well, ultimately, how is the bank making money, not just off of the products we were selling, but more broadly, right? What other, you know, it's a global institution. We had investment banking division. We had, you know, sales and trading division. We have wealth and management. But I felt like I was lacking in, in, in a thorough understanding as to, like, why we were selling these products and why were clients using it. And I felt that, um, you know, going through an MBA program would really help, help strengthen my overall kind of finance skill set and um, better understanding of accounting and help, you know, strengthen my managerial skills that I was develop developing on the job, but that I felt I could also enhance. So I had thought about an MBA program, you know, for several years. And, you know, at, at one point I decided, you know, it's really time for me to return back home and what, what a better way to kind of go back home and, and, you know, through an MBA program. So as I explored different programs, I, I sort of felt that Johnson was the best fit for me, not only because it's a great program and it sort of um, had the immersion program within finance that I was really interested in pursuing, um, but it's really the people that I interacted with that I think um, I connected with the most. So when I was invited for my interview, I, I had reached out to a couple of uh, current students there. And, and when I met with them, I just felt that there was this natural connection that I didn't experience in any other school that I had visited. You know, they treated me like family. They treated me like, like I was one of their, you know, one of their peers, you know, one of their classmates. You know, we went out to dinner and we just had a fantastic time. And, you know, shortly after after leaving my interview and heading back to Germany, where I was based at the time, um, and I got a notification saying that I was accepted to the Johnson program, I just felt just, you know, you know, one, very thankful and very grateful for the acceptance. But I knew that I was going to be, be becoming part of a family, and that's what I was really looking for in a program. Great, thank you, thank you both so much for for the, the introduction. And uh, once again, um, you know um, your your background, of course, uh, Johnson, um, and why you chose Johnson as well. So let's kind of dive in a little bit further. I know that one of the questions that we get asked from the admission side. Um, as well as I'm sure as alums is really about the, the value of the MBA and, um, and how it's really enhanced, how it enhances your career. So, um, you know, being that you've both been out a, a few years, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how the MBA in, in, in has enhanced your career and how Johnson has really prepared you for the ne next steps in your career? And Chris, I will, I'll let you go first on that one. All right, um, absolutely. So I, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start with that. I feel like that's a loaded question because the answer is in so many ways. Um, but really, I think the key to getting an MBA in general, or I would say the biggest benefit to getting an MBA is the opportunities that it's gonna open for you. So where are you today? Uh, where do you wanna go? And you know, can you get there without an MBA? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, it's really about what you want to do in life, what your desired path is, and about the MBA giving you the opportunity to get there. Uh, so for with Johnson, you know, I think for one, the network is just so solid. It's, you know, such a huge network. So many people, for one, willing to help you as you figure out your career pathing and where you want to go. But even just, you know, with companies recruiting and the interest, um, the network is there. So that to me was a huge part of it. And really, like, I think something that Johnson really gives um, the other big thing that you would get from an MBA from Johnson in particular that I felt was the uh, sort of the, the actual skill set that you develop with the immersion program, you get hands on experience in the second semester. So it's, you know, or I forget how there's if they're called semesters or how it's actually broken out, but the semester, I'll call it, um, you get hands on experience with the marketing immersion, we did a consulting project, mine was actually for Johnson and Johnson where I ended up going after. Um, and you're doing focus groups, you're, you're like really doing ground level research and developing, you know, that skill set that you would need out in the real world that prepares you for your internship, prepares you for whatever path you want to go down and what your career is. So huge value there. Um, it's just, 
yeah, I, I mean, those were really the big ones. I think it's a level of academic rigor. It helps you understand what the different opportunities are that's available. Um, and, you know, for me, I would have never been able to go down the path I wanted to that I'm on, which is I work in medical devices and diagnostics um, in marketing. And I, I would never have had this opportunity if I hadn't gone to Johnson, which got me to Johnson and Johnson and, you know, ultimately where I am today. So. Should I? Okay. So for me, um, you know, I, I work now with um, with Citigroup within their um, investment banking division, focusing specific specifically um, with uh, on on private equity clients. So I, I knew that I wanted to pursue a career in investment banking. You know, going into business school. But for me, I, I you know, although I worked for a financial institution for many years, um, I, I was not within an investment banking division. I was, you know, focused on you know transaction banking, operations, management, um, financial management, but not really in a front office sort of role um, and dealing with you know um, you know leading, I guess the leading edge of finance um, in which in you know investment banking embarks on. But um, you know, so for me, honestly, it was a bit a bit intimidating. You know, kind of pursuing this career. You know, you have lots of folks who or entering business school with a very strong finance background, consulting background. And I sort of felt like, you know, you know, can I really make it there? You know, can I can I actually recruit and not only recruit and get the job, but also be successful in the job. And I think what what I really appreciated about the Johnson program was the investment bank and immersion. You know, going through this sort of hands-on experience with experienced investment bankers, um, with private equity professionals, going through the case studies and having just um, hands-on experiences, you know, through case studies with your classmates, I think really st strengthened my confidence. So when it came time for my internship and, um, you know, you see folks, you know, from all different, you know, business schools across the country, you know, top tier business schools, you sort of feel like, you know, are you up to par, you know, are you, are you ready to compete with them for that seat, um, that full-time seat at the end of the summer? And what, what I was pleasantly surprised by is just how advanced I was compared to all my peers. And, you know, the questions that folks were asking, I said, wait a minute, I did that at Johnson. Like, you know, that was like, you know, the first month of my second semester, like, what do you, you know, these are things that were covered, you know, dozens and dozens, dozens of times throughout the program. So I just felt so prepared. And, you know, once I felt prepared and my confidence level increased, I just felt like I was going to crush it. You know, I no longer needed to f focus on the technical skills, you know, um, or the technical, technical aspect about the job, but I was really focusing on doing well and really showing, you know, everyone at the firm that I really wanted to be there. And I had, you know, the skill set to actually be there and, and not just throughout the summer, but for the long term. And I think that carries with me all the way through today. So, um, you know, you just, you know, um, I'm a vice president now within the, within, uh, within investment banking, you know, I've, I've participated in a lot of, you know, great transactions and a lot of the peers that I interact with, you know, on, on different transactions happen to be from Cornell as well. So I think, you know, overall the, the program itself has really, um, funneled a, you know, uh, a huge group of investment bankers within the industry and we all have a close relationship with each other and support each other along the way. Great. Thank you. So as I'd mentioned earlier in one of my slides, I had really focused on leadership and, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to, you know, hear from you on how you feel Johnson has, um, you know, prepared you as a leader and um, if there were any leadership roles that you took advantage of um, during, uh, during your experience uh, in the program. So, uh, George, I'll, I'll hand that one over to you first. Yeah, I was, I was, I became the president of ABLA or the Hispanic American Business uh, Leaders Association. Um, it was a really great experience in, you know, exercising your leadership skills within Johnson. And for me, I, I just felt like giving back was also something that was really important to me. Um, you know, expressing my culture and, you know, fostering a community, uh, a Hispanic community or, or educating others, you know, about, you know, my Hispanic background. I thought that was really important. Um, you know, there, there is, you know, there are some things that um, that we do to really support each other. So we hosted a lot of tutoring sessions for folks. We we had also some, you know, fun events. We um, hosted different kind of um, educational programs, um, and that's like, I think one way that I, um, you know, was able to to practice my leadership in a relatively safe space. But you know, I think a, a, another aspect of it that people you know, don't really think about leadership is really these treks that you participate in. Um, and I had the opportunity to actually go to Patagonia with, um, with you know, the whole Johnson crew. And that was really a phenomenal experience. And 
you know, people think that these treks are all about partying, but this is, this is really, a, you know, a really, really tough trek. And, you know, you're carrying, you know, something like 60 pounds over the course of a week, trekking through mountains, you know, without a clear path. And, and, you know, it's designed in a way that you actually get to lead, you know, the entire team, you know, across, you know, a region, you know, just following a map. And I think that's when you're really exercising, you know, your, your leadership skills, because one, you have people who you're leading for that day um, in an environment where they are tired, exhausted, you know, can easily get frustrated if you decide to go, you know, the wrong direction. And I don't, I don't have a lot of experience trekking and hiking and, and reading these, you know, topographical maps. So for me, it was, it was an exercise in sort of, in, 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 I was learning at the same time on how to lead in this kind of difficult and new environment, but at the same time, trying to leverage, you know, the knowledge of, of a lot of, you know, my classmates who had a lot of experience, especially those that were coming out of the military. And, you know, it was, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, so I think you can learn leadership at Johnson in many ways, you know, through the more formal clubs that are hosted on campus, but also off campus activities where you actually get to exercise your leadership skills in real life. So uh, absolutely, I would second that. And I, I wish I'd gone on the Patagonia trek because um, I heard a lot of good things. Um, it was pretty tough, it seems, but I heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I would say from a leadership perspective, I feel like it's just embedded in Johnson's culture. It's from the moment you start there, you go for the Johnson outdoor experience. All the talk, everything is about seizing the day. It's about showing leadership in different ways, as Jorge mentioned. Um, you know, whether it was in the core team, whether it was providing feedback, whether it was delegating different projects and assuming different responsibilities for it, it's just part of the culture. Um, and I was definitely able to take advantage of that the opportunity to leave myself in my second year in particular. Um, I was on the board for the Women's Association. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed that I actually forgot the exact name of the organization because <laughs> it's been a while, but um, there's a women's club where it's basically fostering leadership with, you know, for women and supporting the local community. And um, so I was on the board position there, led a couple teams for the marketing immersion in my second year and the marketing analytics course as a TA. So just tons of opportunity. And I think ultimately from there, I went on to join Johnson & Johnson's marketing leadership development program. And there are definitely things I took from my experience at Johnson and just from the environment in general and the overall exposure and just opportunities that are there that I was able to factor into my day-to-day -day role at Johnson & Johnson in the leadership development program. So it definitely prepares you in that way. And I think just by making it part of your mindset and your culture really helps foster that mindset of development and growth and motivating others and just sort of building a strong team and always striving forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, of course, finding a job is, is um, you know, a, a big part of that process. And I know that the work that you both have put into recruiting and the networking side is definitely, you know, um, you know, intense um, throughout that experience, but can you maybe elaborate a little, a little bit further on even just working with the career management center, um, you know, maybe even, you know, elaborating a little bit further on maybe how alumni have helped uh, throughout that process. So um, yeah, just the, from the career side would be helpful. Do you want to go Jorge or would you like me to? No, you can start, that's fine. Okay, I'm like, let me uh, think through that. Yeah, that was a journey. It's definitely a lot of work as you stated, but it's, I mean, it pays off. It's just about putting the work into it. Um, I thought we got a lot of support from the very beginning. We were put into these career groups. So I'm not sure if they were career management groups or, or what we were called, I can't remember the exact name, but basically, depending on what your interest was, you're put into these small subset of groups where you had a couple of second years who were there to help guide you with the resume creation process, uh, some interview prep as you're preparing for your internships, which is completely daunting at the beginning because you just like, whoa, like you mentioned, you know, it's you're brand new in this. You're like, am I up to par? What do I do? So a lot of guidance from the second year is super helpful, just like in general interview prep guidance. What kind of companies might you be interested in? Here's an opportunity to check it out. And then more at the more formal level with the Career Management Center, I mean, I worked with Cynthia very closely. Um, she helped, you know, and her team helped review my resume, um, you know, helped me understand like what are different opportunities, who are different alum I should talk to if I thought I was interested in CPG or healthcare or what the path would be. 
So just a lot of support overall. And then it continued as I got back from my internship and decided, okay, I want to kind of change paths. I want to focus more on healthcare as opposed to CPG. What do I do? The support that I received then, I just felt like it was completely invaluable. And I was never at a shortage of alumni to talk to or current students, you know, whether they were second years or my peers who were willing to help. Um, as Jorge mentioned, you know, it's really a strong community and it's all about that. It's all about building each other up and, you know, helping each other succeed. So, you know, I definitely just have nothing but positive feelings about all of that there, as daunting as the whole experience can be. Yeah, um, I completely agree um, with Chris. I think, um, you know, a lot of different, you know, depending on what career path you're going to select, you know, there are different process, recruiting processes that you follow, you know, for, for um, investment banking more specifically, I think it's important to really highlight the role that second years really play in the overall recruiting process, you know, and that, that's why I think distinguishes Johnson from any other business school is just how supportive the overall community is. Um, it's really important to, you know, to, for the overall investment banking recruiting process to really be up to speed on things very early on and figure out whether or not that's, you know, the career you want to pursue. So, you know, connecting with, with second years, understanding what their internship experience was like, understanding how they prepared to get that internship is really critical. And thankfully, you know, we have a, a huge uh, set of students, uh, a large amount of students that pursue investment banking. So you connect with all of them through coffee chats and through different, um, uh, through, um, through, you know, and just really prepare with them throughout the entire process. Um, and that means really meeting with them. You know, there's probably 60 or so that are pursuing investment banking. So you meet with all of them and get to learn what the experience was like, how they prepared. Um, and through the CWG program, like Chris mentioned as well, it, it's, a set, it's, it's an opportunity for you to um, really connect with folks in a small group session, in a safer session to go through any kind of technical preparation for those that are pursuing consulting. It's a great way to sort of practice your, um, your case study, um, you know, uh, interview skills. So Overall, it, it's a really supportive environment. And I think, you know, I should also mention maybe the clubs that are involved in, in helping you out, helping you throughout the recruiting process. So for, for those that are interested in finance, there's old Ezra club and they formalize the entire process for you in conjunction with the uh, career management center and, and connect you with the, um, you know, relevant alumni um, within, within your career path to make sure that you have the um, right people to go to for not only interviewing, but also conducting informational sessions so that throughout the entire fall semester, you are, um, you know, um, doing your rounds and, and, and getting further along the different processes until ultimately at the end of the semester, you probably have a handful of offers on hand that you can select from. And again, what that timeline will vary depending on what career path you're selecting. One thing to note too is depending on what you choose to do and what immersion you pick and what you want, that sort of affects when the heat is on you. So like as Jorge mentioned, investment banking, they basically start what is it, like three weeks into the first semester. Mm -hmm. It's like, or the first month. It's like, and you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you're just there. So you really rely on the second year to help you. In marketing, we had a little bit of an advantage because we don't start really recruiting on campus until beginning of the second semester. So that kind of gives you the whole first semester to figure out what companies do you want to apply to, what do you want to do, work with the second year to have more time. Um, and then if you want something more obscure, obscure, it's off campus, that generally comes later. So, but I think everyone at some point is in the same boat where they're, they're sort of like, you need that support and you get it, which is, is great regardless of what level you're at. Great. Um, so, of course, throughout your uh, you know experience, I know that there are some fun memories that you that you have out there. But can you maybe share one of your favorite moments? Um, you know, uh, throughout your MBA journey, you know, whether that is a, a class, whether it's an experience, um, whether it's just the friendships that you've established, but just one of your favorite moments that you can remember. Don't be, don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll jump in because I'm like super excited about this one. Um, so my favorite experience was Battle the Brands, which is, this is the pitch for going into marketing right here. Like everyone who goes to these MBA programs, like this top program like Johnson is extremely competitive and like crazy. And so you get us crazy marketers together who are all competitive and you're like, all right, it's a battle. You have two weeks to win this marketing campaign. Here's your brand, here's your product, do it. 
Um, and so you're basically putting together your marketing strategy and then, you know, focus on the four P's. So, you know, you'll find out what those are if you don't already know, it's pretty general. Um, so basically you develop your marketing strategy, your marketing plan, and you execute. And so we had Colgate mouthwash. We developed like this whole campaign um, about Colgate. We we're competing with other teams that had, oof, one of them had like the Johnson Johnson product. I forget what all the products were, but everyone has their big brand that they have to market. And you're like competing for advertising space, like all throughout the building. There were like limits to where, you know, some restrictions about where you could put signage, but basically just like spamming the entire building and signage and trying to have a compelling message. And then at the end of all this, you go, you have a presentation, you deliver to a board of, you know, marketing professionals and alumnus and basically walk through your marketing strategy, your plan, your execution tactics, what you did, and then how much money you made at this fair that you just had money, you know, tickets, whatever. But like how many people who had tickets came to you and bought your product based off what you were pitching and how you were selling it. Um, so it was, that was like so much fun. And then to put the cherry on top, in my second year, I got to coach a team. They had Meow Mix, which is a really tough brand to have. If you have a cat, which I do, you'll get why. Um, so came up with a really compelling campaign for that. And it was so much fun, like being on the other side and being able to coach them, but then also being a part of that fun competitive energy. So definitely, I wish I could, I wish I could do that again. I think we're a little bit, we're a little bit less aggressive maybe <laughs> in the real world, but it was a safe space to be able to just have a lot of fun like that. Yeah, you know, for, for me, I have a several moments, you know, throughout the MBA program that I thought were just phenomenal and um, eye-opening. I think one of my first memories where I'm like, wow, you know, I'm at a, you know, super prestigious school was when I realized that, you know, so, so I'm a bit of a nerd. I read the newspaper a lot, read a lot of economic reports. And, um, you know, as I was sitting in my economics class and I'm listening to my professor talk, I'm like, you know what? This sounds kind of familiar. I sort of, I've, 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 I've heard this before somewhere. I'm not really sure where, you know, and eventually I realized that, you know, a lot of the articles that I had been reading, you know, the New York Times and the different kind of um, economic journals, you know, what's coming from the professor was actually teaching Bob Frank. And, you know, he was just a phenomenal professor and I really enjoyed his economics class. He was funny and just the way that he taught, he sort of approached economics in a very different way than I, than you would normally, you know, learn it in undergrad. So, um, you know, it, it was really great being part of that environment. And, you know, again, uh, being the nerd, I, I think looking at my, my accounting professor, you know, in undergrad, I hated accounting. And I thought to myself, how am I going to go to business school and, and face accounting again? I just hate the subject. Um, you know, every now and then I enjoy, you know, reading something about a transaction or, or just, you know, business in general. But accounting class is just, just, just for me wasn't fun. Um, at least not an undergrad until my, you know, I met my, um, I, my accounting professor at Johnson who made me actually love accounting. So, um, you know, those are great experiences, but I think more on the fun side is really the opportunity to go on all these different tracks. So, you know, prior to Johnson, I had traveled a lot, but there were still places that I want to travel to that I knew would be extremely difficult to go to again, you know, post MBA, um, got a chance to go to South Africa twice, got a, you know, a chance to go to um, Zanzibar as well twice, got to go to um, the, on the Israel trek and really, you know, uh, you know, make that an opportunity to really bond with the classmates because I think at Johnson and I think in the overall MBA program, it's really important to build a strong network and a strong bond am amongst your, your classmates and your peers that is hopefully, you know, um, lasting well beyond business school. So I think those are fun experiences, but I think they still carry with me today because we still have a really close relationship with everyone that went on those specific tracks. Right, great. So I'm gonna open it up for one last question so that we can also um, get to our Q and A um, with our participants. And of course, for our participants, um, I, I do see that there are a few questions that have come through. Um, continue to send those through, uh, through the Q and A feature so that we can answer those questions for you. Um, but my last question for the two of you is, if there is one piece of advice that you have for candidates looking at Johnson, looking at an MBA, uh, what would that piece of advice be? And Chris, I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, the opportunity to go first on this one. I'm going to give probably a somewhat broad and vague answer just because I haven't had time to really think through what are all the bits of advice I would want to give. But um, I would say just take advantage of the full opportunity that you have. You're 
never going to be in that situation again. Like I'm speaking specifically of the two year program where it's a full time program. You're never going to be in that situation again where you're surrounded by so many bright, you know, ambitious peers who are like minded, who are focused, who have that energy that you have. Like it just it doesn't happen in the real world. You know, then you especially now COVID's different time anyway because we're all remote. But like that is the one chance where you're really just going to be surrounded by so many amazing people who will support you, who could become great friends, give you lifelong friendships. And, you know, where you have that, just that overall opportunity available to you, like just take advantage of everything, of the classes, of the hard work, of the networking, of the community, enjoy the stage socials whenever they open up again. Um, Just really use the time because once it's, you know, it's going to be an amazing two years. It's going to fly by. And then, then you'll go and, you know, have, hopefully have a career that you love and that, that's all awesome, but it's just never going to be that same again. Like, so just enjoy it, dive into the moment and just make the most of it. Yeah. Um, as you think about, you know, exploring different MBA programs, I think it's important to think about fit and, you know, make sure that sort of the, uh, the culture of the school that you're going to, that you're thinking of potentially attending, you know, fits with your culture and, and your values and you feel like you're going to get along with folks there and that you feel comfortable within the environment. So for example, if you're looking for an environment that's very supportive, I think Johnson is, is, is a great place. And that's what I was looking for. Um, I, I visited so many different business schools, um, you know, as I was thinking about the MBA process. And when I came there, I just, I just knew the support that I felt I needed um, was going to be there when, when I needed it. And, you know, whether that would be through classmates, through the administration, through professors, I just knew it was a really supportive environment where everyone supported each other and everyone was rooting for each other. And that to me was really important. You know, you'll visit different business schools and the culture is just different. You know, um, I think at Johnson, it's like everyone makes it together. And if, if we're all pursuing a certain career route and it's competitive, okay, well, let's help each other out. You know, there might be only one slot, but we're all helping each other out. There aren't, you know, sharp elbows. We're not competing against each other. You know, we want the overall Johnson program to be successful. Now, whether you get the role or I get the role, hey, look, as long as one of us got it, and I think that's what's really important. So um, think about that as you think about your, you know, the schools that you're thinking, uh, the, the schools that you're thinking about applying to, um, you know, their culture and their values, because you're going to be, you know, experiencing them and going through them for two years then. And believe it or not, two years, you know, goes by very fast, but while you're in it, it could be very long if, if you're unhappy. That's a great point. Well, great. Thank you both so much. Uh, one of the things that I will say on our end is this is one of the reasons why I love the work that I do. Um, not only, you know, meeting candidates, but also working with our uh, alumni um, along the way. So thank you to the two of you for joining today. Um, I know that there are some questions that have come through, so um, we will hand it over um, for um, any questions that have come through. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chris and Jorge. It was really uh, very, not only informative, but very motivating to listen to your experience. Uh, We have a few questions that arrived. Uh, The first one was actually a request. Uh, to send over all materials and information that has been shared during this webinar. We will do that. We are actually recording the webinar. So uh, next week you're going to receive the video recording so that you can uh, go back to all the uh, the things that are of interest to you. Uh, We have also received a few questions regarding admissions and admissions criteria. Um, So I'll quickly go through them. Um, first one is, uh, how do you guys see low GRE score for applicants from some developing countries? Any quota on this? So actually, I see two questions here, like how important are uh, test results and are there some cl- quotas for people from developing countries? Okay, great. Uh, so great question. So one, I will say there's, there's not a quota, um, you know, that we, we have, um, you know, especially, you know, when it comes to the, the, the low, lower test score itself. What I will say, though, uh, about lower tests, 
keep in mind that our approach in the application process is a holistic approach. It is much more than a, a GMAT and a GRE score. And I understand why, I do understand why candidates focus on it so much, but there are candidates that have so much more in their application um, where I believe that the pros outweigh the cons in their application. So maybe you're not the best test taker, but you did very well academically and you're able to show your strength in quantitative courses. Maybe your work experience is from the, the quantitative side and you've been able to show you know, progression and uh, lead projects, lead teams. Those are the, some of the things that we're, that we're, that we're looking at. So, you know, there are candidates who are below our averages um, and, and even below our range. But once again, when we look at them as a candidate as a whole, they're ultimately a great fit, um, you know, for our, our community. And that's what we're really looking for. So, you know, if you are submitting a lower test score, what I would ask you to do and encourage you to do is kind of be more uh, um, proactive instead of reactive. So, you know, if you know that you have a lower score or even, even if your academic side um, from the quantitative side in particular are on the lower end, the question is, what are you doing to prepare? So have a game plan before you move forward, you know, especially in an interview process, you know, before a decision is made that we know that you're aware of this and that you're taking the necessary steps to be successful in business school. Thanks, Eddie. Um, there was one more question um, related to admissions requirements, and it refers to uh, the work experience. So how do you count the work experience? If someone had already experienced before their bachelor's degree, does it count? So yeah, so we, we'll, look at, um, we'll look at everyone's application on a case-by-case -case basis in this situation. We do understand that, um, you know, some people may have gone on and, you know, they were in the military for five years before they went to get their bachelor's, um, you know, or maybe, you know, there are entrepreneurial ventures that you worked on um, first. Um, so, you know, situations like that, yes, we will look at that as, as, as work experience. In our application, it does say that, um, you know, um, our work experience is looked at as post undergrad, but once again, every everyone's situation is a little bit different. So, you know, when we read, when we look at your resume, when we read your essays, we have a full, you know, um, understanding. We need, or we, yeah, we we walk away with a full understanding of, you know, the decisions that you've made. Um, you know, why you decide to work first before getting your bachelor's, uh, so on and so forth. So, so once again, you know, to answer that question, once again, it is on a case by case basis where we um, will look at that as full-time experience, um, you know, cause once again, every situation is different. Yeah. And I also assume that uh, you uh, welcome uh, candidates with different, with diverse uh, work experiences and backgrounds. Cause yeah, now we have a question from someone who had uh, experience in international shipping so would this be um, would this help them to get into the to the MBA program? Is it possible? Yeah, I'll actually let our alums answer that question because you know, um, of course, from the admission side, we are looking for for candidates from various diverse backgrounds. Um, but you know, maybe you, uh, the two of you can also elaborate a little bit further on what you saw from your classmates, different backgrounds that they were coming, um, you know, coming from. Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll just speak for marketing and Jorge can speak for the finance side. Um, I mean, so for me, I think I had a sort of similar related background, just working in media and having exposure to CPG and it was a segue, but a lot of my classmates didn't. I mean, I had other fellow marketing classmates who had consulting backgrounds or finance backgrounds, even um, fashion backgrounds. Like we came from all these different different situations and had a common interest and, you know, we all wanted to go into marketing and it really, it, what we found is like, it really doesn't matter um, or it really didn't matter like what your background was because Johnson's going to prepare you for that career path. So we are all starting from the same state. You all have that same core marketing class. You go into the immersion and you're there to support each other, learn from each other. You have really good support from the, the, uh, the professors and the tutors and second years, like, it really, 
the short answer is yes, it really doesn't matter what background you come from. I think what matters is your eagerness to learn and to focus on what it is that you want to do and that you're going to, you know, be getting there and that you make sure that you just utilize the tools that are around you and, and the resources. And I, I think there's absolutely opportunity there. It's just focus on your skill sets and how you could transfer that and apply it there. Yeah, I agree. I think people um, that were pursuing finance and investment banking came from all kinds of backgrounds. Those that had, you know, no finance background at all, ever worked for a financial institution, were pursuing investment banking, might have had a, just a retail background, and were pursuing investment banking and were extremely successful. Like Chris said, I think it's all about, you know, how you're preparing and how you're use, using the resources around you for that preparation. That that's what ultimately determines whether or not you're going to be su successful. But I think, really, um, you know, going through an MBA program is an opportunity for you to you know pivot into a different industry than where you're coming from and i think a lot of people take advantage of that of that um mba pro of the mba program to make that um to, uh, to make that pivot great thanks uh, a lot um and uh, we have also one a few questions about the program itself and the different pathways uh, i'll read them out now uh, could you please throw some light on the immersion and intensive pathways for those looking to switch into consulting, could we be flexible with strategic marketing and the management cases, cases immersion? I guess this one is rather a question for Eddie. Yeah. So, so if you're looking to go into consulting in particular, um, the, the typical path that a student will take advantage of is, um, is really either the, um, Operations, um, we, we typically see, we'll see a lot of students will take advantage of more of the operations um, immersion itself while taking advantage of um, there is the consulting pro, um, program that's also associated, um, you know, during that spring semester as well. Uh, so that's what I would, that's what you will typically see. Um, so even with operations, you know, once again, there are, you know, there's going to be various projects. Um, there may be, you know, certain consulting firms that you may be working on in various uh, projects that way. So um, that's what you will typically see, once again, if you're looking to go into consulting. Um, I, my recommendation for you is to um, even reach out to our consulting club right now, to our, our current students um, who are going through consulting uh, to talk about, you know, what the immersion, they're, they're going through their immersion experience right now or connecting with some second years who can maybe even elaborate further on what the immersion looked like. Um, of course, looking at that list that I provided earlier, you will notice that there is no consulting immersion. But once again, um, typically you will see students go with the semester in um, strategic operations immersion with um, uh, you know, taking advantage of the consulting um, programs that are also available. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I have a question regarding the difference between uh, the Cornell Tech MBA compared to the one-year MBA. Yeah, absolutely. So the difference between the Cornell Tech MBA and the one-year MBA, um, of course, they're both one-year programs. Um, one of the, the things about both programs is they actually um, complete the, their summer core courses together in Ithaca, New York. Um, once the fall semester begins, Cornell Tech returns back to New York City, and of course, our residential one-year students stay in Ithaca. Um, keep in mind, once again, um, you know, with the one-year program itself in Ithaca, you know, you are talking about, you know, um, you know, walking away with an MBA, really focusing on your a general management MBA. You're going to have an opportunity of, you know, having classmates from various different backgrounds. Um, we see a lot of dual degrees that are in the program, um, whether it's a JD MBA and MD MBA. Once again, someone who is looking to take an, uh, complete a one-year accelerated program, um, you know, with it, once again, in, within that one year, but also has a strong leadership focus behind it. For Cornell Tech, once again, it is for those who are looking to, um, for, for entrepreneurs in the, the tech industry, those who are looking to bridge that gap between tech and, and business. Um, you know, those who um, ultimately also have solid experience um, in the tech industry. Um, and once again, are looking to go through that one year uh, 
accelerated our process. Um, you know, the Cornell Tech uh, program itself, you know, they have um, what they call um, product studio and also the startup studio, which gives you that opportunity of really working with uh, tech companies, um, you know, helping them with various projects. And then of course, going through the startup studio itself, where you're actually creating a product from start to finish and really, um, you know, working together as a team to, um, you know, come up with the best product uh, itself. So, you know, once again, one program is strictly focused on tech and, and bridging that gap with business, whereas the residential MBA program will give you that flexibility to really be able to get that general management MBA, also focusing on leadership, but then also working with students from various different backgrounds. Thanks, Eddie. We uh, keep on uh, receiving questions, but I'm afraid we're running a bit out of time. So I'll now um, bring Chris and Jorge back to the spotlight with one final question. Um, can, could you describe a bit more on the campus life, including the experience of being involved in many different clubs? So again, um, could you share your experience about networking and the social life on campus? Uh, I, I, so, go ahead, Jorge. No, yeah, I, I think one of the great benefits of being in Ithaca is that all your classmates are there in Ithaca and they're there all the time. So it's super easy to socialize with folks. Um, there aren't a lot of competing demands outside of Ithaca. So everyone really, you know, is sort of um, encouraged to socialize with each other and find ways how to have fun. Um, and, and I think, again, just to distinguish, you know, um, Cornell versus any other program is that, you know, it's, it's super easy to sort of just call someone and say, hey, by the way, you want to get together, we can have a drink, you know, at the bar down this, you know, um, on College Avenue, or we can go have dinner at this restaurant. It's just incredibly easy to organize things. It doesn't take a lot of formality and planning just because everyone is really on campus or not too far from campus. Um, for me, it, it was really great just being just more broadly in Ithaca because I had a dog. He was like, you know, the super hyper, you know, hunting dog and just having the forest around me, you know, trails where you can, I can let him loose and, and I can go for a hike or for a run. That's something, again, I feel you just can't get into many business school environments. Um, you know, obviously, you know, participating in, in the different clubs is also quite fun, um, you know, not just the ones where you're, you know, taking a leadership position, but also clubs that are more social in nature, like the wine club, for instance. I think that was phenomenal being part of it, especially being in Ithaca that has a huge wine region where you can explore different vineyards and just, again, have a great time with your classmates while at the same time learning something new. Yep, I would second all of that. Uh, the beer club too, Johnson on Tap. That was a great one to be in. You get to try some really good beers, so highly recommend it. And the wine club. There's also a music club that a few of us were part of. It may have grown by now. Well, thanks. Thank you all uh, for for your time to answer all these questions. Uh, for those of you who did not have their questions answered, we'll take care to send them to Eddie, Chris, and Jorge afterwards, and we'll forward you the answers by email. We will also send you all a link to the recording of the session. Um, with this, I would like to thank everyone who attended this webinar. We hope uh, it had helped you to make your decision about applying at Johnson. On behalf of you and my team, we'd like to wish you success in your academic career, and we are looking forward to staying in touch. And Eddie, Chris, and Jorge, it was really wonderful to meet you and to learn from you more about the MBA and Joyce and Johnson. Thanks, everyone. Wishing you a great day and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.